A few weeks back, I dusted off my decade-old bike from the earliest days of GCN to find out just how much faster my modern bike is. The answer? A lot. 3k an hour, in fact, for the same maximal effort. So even though I'm 10 years older, 10 more years have passed since I was a pro cyclist, and I can still basically go at the same speed. My legs have hemorrhaged 50 watts from somewhere, but through some fancy engineering, I have found gains to compensate. Not just marginal gains, massive gains. However, some of you weren't terribly satisfied with the result. You felt that my choice of wheels meant that it wasn't a fair test. And I get that. A Mavic Caesarium from 2013 is light and responsive and comfortable, but fast? It is not. Not one aspect of this wheel, so far as I can tell, has been designed with aerodynamics in mind. And yet, aero wheels were available in 2013. Of course they were. They just weren't quite as ubiquitous. I have found a set of my old race wheels from 2012. Incredible things, so light, so beautiful, and so also really not aero. Imagine, I'd probably have won the Tour de France if only I'd known quite how much these were holding me back. However, it just so happens that I had a pair of Vision Metron 81 SLs lying around after another video. Clearly, I hadn't ventured back up into the attic of doom yet to put the other bike away, and so I thought, well, why not? Ten-year-old bike, but with bling modern wheels and modern tyres. How much can we close the gap? The test? A full gas time trial on a pan-flat course. Eight kilometres long with just 10 metres of elevation gain. I'll go first on my older bike so I've got the freshest possible legs for it. I'm as interested as you are to know the result. Beep, 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 beep. I tell you what, this feels blooming quick. Like night and day compared to last time. Wow. What a difference a pair of wheels makes. Obviously, different day, different course. But first impressions, and that, that was that was rapid. I mean, it doesn't get much faster than an 80mm Vision Metro on 81, but I'm gonna be so interested to know the times of these two. So interested. Right. Get swapped over. One of the points to address is that in that previous video, I mentioned that the position on my canyon is shorter and lower than on my old bike. And a lot of you equated that to therefore being faster, but I'm not so sure. My frontal area on the two bikes is basically the same. The only difference is quite how much I'm having to bend my elbows. But otherwise, my back and my shoulders and my head are all in the same position. In fact, if you drop the front end too far, you do become less aero because your arms start to straighten out, which increases your frontal area. Plus, you could also end up losing power because your position is simply too extreme. There is, however, a key difference between the two bikes, and that is the width of the handlebars. So in 2013, I was using 42 centimeter wide handlebars, and I loved them, and a lot of other people did too. I did a bit of research last night. It turns out that Tom Boonen was using 42 centimeter wide bars in 2013. So too was Vincenzo Nibali and Peter Sagan. And according to this chancer, Sylvain Chavanel as well. 
Well, no, it's interesting things like his aluminium handlebars, aluminium stem, both from Ritchie. The bars, I think, are 42 centimetres wide. Fabian Cancellara, meanwhile, was using 44s, and rumour has it that Chris Horner actually used mountain bike handlebars and bar ends to win the Vuelta in 2013. So, narrow handlebars were definitely not a thing in 2013. But that presents us with a bit of a dilemma, because on the one hand, this bike should have wider handlebars, because that's what everyone was running. But on the other hand, the fact that it will make it slower isn't the bike's fault, it's the rider's position, isn't it? And I could easily swap these out for narrower bars, very easily in fact, because of the external cables. So, in the interest of curiosity, I am gonna equal them up but I'm not gonna swap the bars out, I'm just gonna widen the ones on the canyon, because I can. Before we go and smash it for a second and final time, let's quickly just take stock, shall we? I am riding a new school aero bike, but with old school handlebar width, and my wheels on this are shallower than the ones on the old bike but I do have an aero frame. I've got aero handlebars, albeit with these two slightly offensive sections that need taping. And I've also got integrated cables. So frankly, I'm not entirely sure what we're testing now. I think we're basically just trying to make a 10 year old bike faster than a modern aero bike by alternately pimping that and handicapping this. Still, I am blooming intrigued to know what the results are gonna be. Right. Let's do this. Well, first impressions. I couldn't tell you whether this felt quicker or not. I guess it didn't feel quicker. Really weird. Change the handlebars instantly like that. Like, fine, once you get used to it. But first impression was, it's a totally different bike. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't guess what the results are gonna be. Right, I've pressed stop, so it's beaming its way to my uh, Wahoo account. Place your best now. Results time then. My old bike with bling modern wheels completed the time trial, with me on it, of course, in a time of 12 minutes and 34 seconds. My Canyon posted a time of 12 minutes and three seconds. So 31 seconds faster than my old bike. Now, that is obviously a smaller difference than last time. In terms of average speed, this one was 1.8k an hour faster. Of course, we can't directly compare because it's a different day, it was a different course, different weather, but it gives us something to chew on. Surprise, surprise, deep section wheels make a bike faster. And then I'm assuming that my slightly wider hand position also made me slower on my Canyon Aero. So, Great news for a lot of people out there is that if you've got a non error optimized bike, you can of course optimize it further by changing your position and sticking more aero bits on there. But it's gotta be said that we can also optimize this Canyon Air Road further. So I could fit faster race day tires on there. I could set them up tubeless and I could try and persuade Ollie to wax my chain for me. Now all of those have also been developments really that have taken place in the last 10 years. And I think that's the context that we need to put this whole comparison into really. Yes, aero was a thing in 2013, but for most pros really, it consisted of banging a deeper section set of wheels in. I mean, let's face it, Fabian Cancellara, the best time trialist of his generation, was using 44 centimeter wide handlebars to solo to victory in Paris-Roubaix. Whereas now, we really know the importance of aerodynamics, the point where socks and sunglasses can save you watts, not to mention literally everything else. And as mentioned, we know the importance of things like drivetrain friction, largely thanks to Friction Facts beginning to release studies in 2013. And we know about 
super smooth bearings and we know about rolling resistance and we know about vibration losses. So without a doubt, I think the last decade, certainly the 2010s, have been cycling's age of enlightenment. For better or for worse. Now, I love bike tech, always have done and probably always will do. But even I find the amount of optimizations that you can do to a road bike slightly dizzying. And I think it would be slightly unnerving to line up at the start line of a road race, being able to see how much faster or slower you would be to everyone else. The great news though, is that that doesn't matter one jot when I'm out riding my bike with my mates in the hills. A road bike feels great, whether you're riding it at 30k an hour or 32k an hour or 40k an hour or 42k an hour. I imagine it feels pretty good faster than that, but I wouldn't really know. Anyway, let us know in the comments section what you think about these results. Have they surprised you in that, is this bike now faster than you expected? Or indeed, is it not quite as fast as you imagined? Get involved in the comment section down below. I can't wait to read them.